10 seconds, I guess. And we're live on YouTube right now. Cool. So I'm guessing we'll sit here for a little while. Let me uh, close the chat. Couple minutes, I guess. Yeah. And let's see, there's a, on YouTube, there's a, a uh, what do you call it, a chat window. So people can write into the chat. Looks like someone's already logged in. Hello, hello. We are gonna hang out here for a few minutes and probably start in about five or so. Well, maybe sooner than that. Yeah. What do you think? Like three minutes, we'll do a three minute. Yeah, three, three or four minutes and then make sure everything looks right and, and just start chatting about orchids and you know, we could. What's up, Dan? So actually during this preliminary getting started period, people at home, you are our, um, you are our sound people. So if I sound louder than Steven, or if Steven sounds louder than me, or if the sound sounds, if there's anything weird about it, please let me know and I can try to fix it. And, and this, this is our, our trial run just for, I guess it's just Dan watching. So, so Dan knows, uh, you know, this is the first time we've ever done this. So we're just kind of screwing around. So let us know if, uh, if it works or if it doesn't work. Right. Yeah. Hello, Anita. We've got three people right now. And I'm guessing I'm no one's saying anything about sound. So hope I'm hoping you guys can hear. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, feed, feedback from, from everyone watching is appreciated. Just be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steven said that this is our first Bloom broadcast. So it's going to be wonky. It's going to be wonky. <laughs> it's not going to smell very good. Yeah. It's not going to be very... It's not going to be... The colors are going to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> might, we might come out upside down at some point. Yeah. Actually, I, I'm, I'm looking at, I've got the sun coming in and, the, and this window here and I'm kind of, I've got these buds on this catacetum that I brought inside so the creatures won't eat it. And the sun, it's amazing how cool um, the sun makes your flowers look. So if you ever have a really great bloom that you're really proud of, take it into the sun, it's probably going to be even nicer. Um, and, and this one isn't even open yet and the colors look like they're just going to be amazing. I think it's the first bloom. You brought the, well, I guess you'll tell us in a minute what you brought, but yeah, no, definitely the sunlight. That's one reason I love having the one side of the tent transparent because in the morning it's just, I get, get a little stained glass effect at the flowers. Yeah, I guess, well, you know, where we're just having idle chit chat, I, I got a, a grow tent from a friend um, and it's, it was used, but it, I'm going to set it up in a closet, I think for the winter and just just bring some of my seedlings in because that'll, that'll like give some more space in the greenhouse. I honestly don't know if I have enough room in my greenhouse <laughs> for all the plants that I have. Um, but it's so already I, full. Bring, I think it, I think it will be. And so if I can take like, you know, a, a closet size amount and just bring them inside, maybe the more sensitive ones like the doyanas. Um, although my, my seedling doyanas did just fine near freezing last year, several times. Uh, you know, they were dry. I think one of the times they were actually wet. So I, I figured they'd croak, but they were fine. It's weird. It's, Doesn't mean I want to do it again, though. No, I almost feel like seedlings a lot of times are tougher than the adults. Especially for those real touchy ones like doyana that like if it smells water at the wrong time and the wrong temperature just. Yep. <laughs> Turns into a brown pile of mush. Yeah, exactly. I had a really nice Rosita in Hawaii when I moved to Texas. I, I gave my collection to a friend who ultimately shipped everything to me. That's and awesome. he was on the windward side of Oahu and um, it, it rained one day, like it does in winter in Hawaii. And the whole thing just went bleh. In Hawaii, the thing died. Yeah. So, you know, the coldest temperature i mean people are in ugg boots and sweaters and and full-on winter jackets if it's if it's 55 you know um 
and, and that that, that doughiana still croaked, and it was a big mature plant. I do Rosita. remember reading that it likes warmer. It doesn't like anything below sixty-five, something like that. Yeah, it's kind of like a, some of the vandas or, or some of the fails are, are like that too. So it, it's kind of like that. Well, Stephen, we've got thirteen people. Some people have said hi to us. We got John, we got Matt, we got Eileen, we got Anita, and we have Dan. Love that you guys are here. Thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and get started. So I'm William Green. This is Stephen Van Campen Lewis. Yep. We are doing a live chat today just so that uh, you guys can be a part of this because we do this, you know, occasionally we'll make our video, we'll record it. It's just me and him talking and then we put it out there and but we we haven't had a lot, a lot of opportunities to interact with people, so anytime you have questions or comments, please feel free to leave those, and uh, I'll convey those to you as they come up. Stephen, if I can keep track of everything. And just one more yeah. time, if you weren't here before, if you do have any issues with sound, if I'm sounding too loud and Stephen is sounding too quiet or vice versa or anything like that, please just let us know. I, I think I can do something about it. Just let me know if, if, if there's anything that needs to happen. So and we do appreciate the feedback. And uh, actually also, you know, w William, you were telling me there's a 10 second delay. So if so, keep that in mind for anyone who's 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 interacting with us or chatting or whatever. Um, right. When, 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 whenever you hear us, we've already said it's 10 seconds ago. So it, we're, we're going to try to manage that. Yeah. <laughs> So I guess let's start out today's conversation with how was the Tam Miami Orchid Festival? I saw your video. I was very envious. It was super fun. It was absolutely amazing. Um, I, I like you, I also say Tam Miami. Uh, I was told uh, that that's not how you pronounce it. Apparently, I, I can't remember what the actual pronunciation is. But so uh, uh, I guess I'll just keep saying Tam Miami so I don't. <laughs> So I don't know. Uh, so I don't butcher the correct saying, um, but it was fun. It was it was great. So I got there. Uh, I, you know, I left here early in the morning in Austin, and then I landed it in Miami in about nine thirty a.m. Um, and then went to my hotel, checked in, got uh, uh, asked the gal at the front where I should eat for lunch, and she suggested a great Cuban place. So I got an amazing Cuban sandwich. Oh, and, nice. And then went over to the judging, and that was on Thursday, and got to judge with uh, alongside Martin Motes and Frank Smith and um, and some other folks. Um, Nancy Mountford, who you know she's been working with the AOS for for many many years, and is a great judge. And I actually got to hang out with Nancy for for three days, and and we had a lot of fun. Um, and then I was able to go back on Friday and actually just kind of like go to the booths and, um, you know, I get to like hang out a little bit after judging, uh, uh Bart Motes was, um, handing out wine at the tent. So I got to chat with him a little bit. And then, but then Friday I got to do like what, you know, what you want to do and, and, and go hang out with the vendor vendors and, and go from tent to tent. And, uh, and Friday was the day that I actually filmed it. Um, and, and I bought most of my plants on Friday. And then that evening I, I had dinner with, um, uh, Francisco Miranda and Stephen Champlin, who is the owner of Floralia. Um, and so Stephen, they were in I, from Brazil. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Francisco and his wife, Christina, they live here, but they, they travel back and forth quite a bit. They're, they're Brazilian. Stephen is an American who married a, a Brazilian down there. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he has a really interesting model of, of how he gets the orchids and he doesn't actually grow a whole lot. He's collecting from all these small vendors around the country. Um, so, it, you know, that's, that's why each order that I do, um, all the plants look a little different. And, you know, some, some of the plants are, are like a big one and then some are small. And I think it's because he's just, he's just individually sourcing from around the country from, from different folks. And, and I, I thought that was really cool. And then on Saturday, I went back again and I was there for a couple hours. Um, I was actually going to hang out with, um, uh, Nicole Deanna. Uh, she has a YouTube channel and, uh, but, uh, Nancy and I were just exhausted. There was a huge line out the door and we're like, let's just go to Fairchild Botanical Gardens. 
Um, so we ended up going to Fairchild Botanical Gardens and that place is, is more amazing than any place I've ever been. It may have even been cooler than the show almost. Um, you know, they're, they're doing the million orchid project and they have all this. Um, and so they're trying to put all these orchids back into the wild um, they're cultivating wild ones. And actually Nancy, she has her own, um, place in the Dominican Republic and she is doing a lot of that flasking as well in the Dominican Republic and then bringing it back to Fairchild for them to distribute. So it was really cool. Actually, I got to go there with her and she really showed me around and showed me some cool stuff. Um, but then also on, on Saturday, uh, I was able to hang out with, uh, Olivier Turner. He's got his own YouTube channel. Um, it actually one of my favorite YouTube channels for orchids, um, cause he grows a lot of catacetums. Um, and he is Fort Lauder orchid house, Fort Lauder, Fort Lauderdale. And then, um, Ray Ray from Ray's garden was there. And it was just, it was fun to, to, to chat with people. So there's like, there's the judging w- was great. The vendors was great. Um, and then just socializing right. and meeting new people and, and seeing old friends. Uh, I got to hang out with Mike Hamlin and Naoki, um, for, for sushi one night. And, um, I, I could, I could, I could babble on for hours. Yeah, it's so. hard to think all that happened in the span of like what two days. Yeah, I landed Thursday and I left Saturday night. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, great. Yeah, so I was, I was busy. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, shall we jump on to the plants? I brought in, I brought in a special guest. Uh, he was not requested, but he just opened his flower last or this morning. So I just wanted to bring Hal in to say hi to everybody. Hal is, uh, he just put a. He just put this spike out. He had three; those all finally finished, and then he immediately started another one. So I just wanted to bring Hal in to say hi. I can smell him from here. Oh yeah, he smells great. <laughs> Hal really loved living, uh, spending his summers outside in uh, Kentucky, where it was hot and humid, raining all the time. In the tent, he's not a hundred percent so happy but i'm not 100 percent sure why either like for example see the crispiness back here it's like the leaf starts to die back at the tip and this is like a process of years and years and years you know before it finally just takes it but i don't know is that just the natural is that just how it goes or do you think there's actually something wrong i don't know again i don't know it doesn't look great but yeah it could just be a natural thing Maybe it's water purity. You're just using tap water? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but I have started putting aquarium water conditioner in my uh, water, tap water, before I put it on the plants to sequester all the chloramine out of the water. And mm-hmm. I started doing that. Someone actually on here, I think his name is Spencer, gave me the uh, idea to do that and said that if I was going to use InocuCore or any of those um, like uh, probiotics, plant probiotics, mm-hmm. um, it would, if you use tap water, it'll kill the bacteria. So you have to make it conditioned oh, first. Sense. And I was yeah, like, okay. Yeah. So I started doing it all the time. And now I've noticed that I've got a lot more algae growing on the sides of the tent. And I'm like, okay, it's working. Is this good? <laughs> is it, yeah, is this, is this a good is thing? Is this what I wanted? That's funny. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, how, what is your water like there? Is it hard? Is it? No, it's about 50 parts per million out of the tap. No. Oh. Total dissolved well, solids. So it's that's nice. Fine. It's Colorado yeah. snow melt. Okay. Well, that sounds lovely. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's good. That's why they make so much beer here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I drink, I drink plenty of that Colorado beer. <laughs> All right. I want to show you another, this other guy was requested. Um, this is the bubble film continuatum. You can see how tiny he is. Apologize. And that's not a, that's not a common one at all. No, I've seen, I've seen maybe one other one on Instagram. The guy, I think he's Mr. Or, Mr. Orchid ACI. He has one, hmm. um, but this comes from Andy's Orchids. If you want one, you can go to Andy's and get one. Um, and uh, it was given to me a couple years ago by my friend Joe. You've and got a couple of species in there, right? Yeah, the bigger one, the big. you can see the big bulbs here. These are the crocium, bulbocrocium. And then the smaller ones back here, this is the continuatum. 
And it's just cool. nice. It's cute. You know, it's, it's, we caught it, we caught it early enough where the flowers still open by the afternoon. It usually closes up and it does that for about three or four days and then they fall off, but it's really been real easy to grow. This other one, this crocium, I have this thing like it grows leaves and then they turn yellow at the tip like this mm -hmm. and then they fall off. So you can see the bulbs themselves are fat. Like the it the plants got water, but it's not able to hold on to leaves. And I'm wondering if it's a humidity issue, temperature issue. What is your humidity? It's it's it can be as low as fifty or it can be as high as eighty. It just depends on um usually I try to water in the evening and so it has a nice high humidity all all night. And in the mm -hmm. morning, it's like 60, 70 when I open the tent up to look in there. And then when I get home in the afternoons, it's as low as 50. Like it's all kind of dried up during the day. And then I try to repeat that cycle. Interesting. So. Yeah, I don't, bulbos, I, I'm, I'm kind of getting into them. In fact, one of the plants that I brought in is a bulbo as well. Um, this Ooh. is a uh, Denisii, and this is the clone Lil. Uh, and Lil has a CCM. Um, and I was growing this one in a terrarium in my office. Oh, that's so my cool. office, you know, it's permanently 70 degrees. Uh, and I had the lid on the terrarium closed. And I was like, well, it's going to die because it doesn't see seasonal variation. Um, and it's just closed in. It loved it. It mm. bloomed almost all the time, nonstop. Uh, I would I would forget to water it for weeks sometimes, and then I would hit it with water, and it's like, oh, I'm alive again, and it would bloom. Um, so I figured, well, okay, I'm, I, you know, I, I tore the tank down it, it, at my office, and I brought it home, and I was like, okay, well, let's see if it can grow outside in Texas. And it can grow just fine, as you can see. I think, I, I think it was half this big about a year ago. Oh, wow. Um, it just doesn't bloom. So it ha it's outside, so it has seasonal cues. It has, um, you know, day length temperature, temperature variation. I just, I don't know what it is. I, I kind of wonder if I need to torture it like the way, or if it needs a high humidity, you know, some of these, these finer root ones, right. like maybe like the one that you, you're talking about, uh, needs that, that high humidity, but it seems to be growing just fine. Yeah. And it's interesting you mentioned that because I feel like, yeah, some plants like Hal really liked that having those summers outdoors, but the other plants that are a little bit more finicky, finicky like my Calyrexes, they've done better in the tent in that controlled, constant mm -hmm. environment. They've done way better in that than they ever did growing outside in the summer because it was it was just too variable and they need yeah. really constant conditions. So yeah, it's very possible. It just really liked your tank. Yeah, yeah. And and, and thinking about your Rex, I mean, Rex, Varsavixia, and Doiana kind of, kind of all have that. They're in the same area. You know, they 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 seem to like that. I'm just about ready to give up on, on Varsavixia and my conditions. Really? What? Um, I, I don't know. I, it just seems like it's it's it just takes so much work, and it's taking oh. up space. <laughs> so... Well, I remember we'll last time you saying you had just, it felt like you started, you were starting to get some real progress. You either found the shade of your conditions, more moisture. So I'm surprised to hear this. Yeah. It's just, I think it's just that, that, that back and forth that us orchid growers do or like, nah, do I want to keep this? Nah, screw it. Oh, maybe I do want to keep it. Uh, so I'm on the downswing of my enthusiasm. Who knows? In a couple months, I might be on the way back up. <laughs> we'll see. Eileen in the chat says, wish I had some. I think that's a hint, hint right there. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, a rehoming uh, suggestion, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Vicious V says, I put my orchids outside this year. Almost all of them got burnt. Oh. And, yep. The sun is a mighty powerful thing. In fact, mm -hmm. even though my tent gets sunlight for just a couple hours in the morning and that's it all the flowers point towards the window oh it's just so much brighter even two hours of sun versus eight hours of overhead light it it's the sun that gets their attention they're like oh they know you 
Yeah, and they know. They're like, that's the real one. I want that one. Yeah. <laughs> and it is true. And it's powerful. When I put my light meter in there with the sun, it's like 5,000 um, lumens or foot candles, one of those. And then, you know, underneath the lights, it's still strong, but it's not, it's not as intense. So, yeah, they know. What are your lights? Since I, I'm going to have to buy, I think I'll have to buy a new one for that, that grow tent. Well, a few, uh, I guess when I was thinking about putting my uh, tent together, a company called Spider Farmer contacted me and they said, hey, we'd love for you to try our lights. And, you know, which one do you think would work best for you? And I said, well, the, the, the SF1000 looks good because it's supposed to approximate a 1,000 watt um, light, I believe, like a 1,000 watt high pressure sodium. I think mm -hmm. that's why they're, that's, that's the 1,000. But, um, so they sent it to me, I put it in there. I had just that one light for the whole tent and everything looked pretty darn good. Like I was seeing purple edges on the leaves and stuff. And I was like, this little thing, but it, it, I mean, they are powerful. So I, I went ahead and got a second one. And so now I have the two, the two lights kind of equally spaced and they're about, gosh, maybe three, two to three, four feet above the tops of the cattleyas now some of them plants are different heights so some of them are yeah. kind of closer but um that light is intense intense and it, it's like a square it's like this big it just looks like a be. square panel about this big like yeah. a foot square and it just you just you just hang it and it's got a dimmer switch on it and you can so you can make it you know brighter or, or less you know depending mm -hmm. on I have just have them full. I have them on wide open, and they are powerful, powerful lights. I, I think any of those brands, like I think I see a lot of um, hydro, no Mars Hydro. Um, heck, they might all they might all be the same company in China, putting them out under different names. I don't know, but they're, I think they're all good. A lot of people show really good results with them. I'm able to grow very high light plants that really seem to be doing well. Um, and when I put my head in the tent, I always put sunglasses on because it physically hurts my eyes. Okay. <laughs> huh. All right. I'll check that out. Actually, the, the, the spider farmer guy contacted me a year or two ago and said, hey, can you can you highlight this on your channel? And I was like, well, I don't grow anything under lights, so no, sorry. <laughs> um, Write him back. Yeah, yeah, I should. see See if he's still interested. Yeah. You can be like, I've already mentioned your product in this video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, well, yeah, maybe. should we move too. on to uh, those exciting catacetums? Yeah. Um, well, actually, before we do that, uh, so I, I actually ended up bringing over uh, several plants that are not catacetums or cattleyas. Okay. Uh, because I don't know, I figured I'd mix it up. You're gonna show. Uh, you're gonna show a side of you we don't often see. Exactly, a fowl oh my that Lord. I got at, at Tam this? Miami. Um, oh, that's the good, that's, oh man, if I had any of those types of phalaenopsis, that's the one I would get, is that tetraspis, tetraspis. And it's, and it, so, it, you know, tetraspis is, it could also be speciosa, phalaenopsis speciosum. Um, so I, I don't know what it'll bloom out, but I saw one, one of these blooming um, at the Krull Smith tent, and it was, it's, it was cerulea, and I was like, God, that is, that is too cool, but it's a foul. I'm not going to buy it. Um, and then I was talking to my, my friend, Dimitri. He's at, uh, he's on an orchid board, um, uh, Mr. Fake Name. He's over there in France, and he, he grows a lot of fowls. He's like, dude, you got to get that one. Um, and so I went back on, on Saturday, and I picked this. It, it, I assume it's a, a clone because it has YL on the end. Oh, okay. Um, but, you know, I think the one that I saw blooming was fragrant. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm a sucker for fragrant plants and what the heck I'll have a foul. <laughs> you know, I, I can have one, right? Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's the coolest one because of the way that it, the flowers aren't symmetrical. There's a little patch of red here. There's a patch here, a spot here. That's yeah. that super cool. Yeah. It's a, it's a weird little thing. So I figured the weird little things, they're welcome in my collection. <laughs> Absolutely. But it might need some special care. So yeah yeah we'll see i actually have it just growing underneath the walkerianas is so it's all shaded mm. and then when i water them it just gets water automatically so it's it's almost a companion plant you know? that's funny 
Um, so if it dies, whatever. Well, anything else? No, you said you, you, you brought some of those catacetums. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Yeah. If Eileen says, don't knock the fouls. I gotta be honest. Um, I refer to phalaenopsis, well, you have the really cool ones like the Schilleriana with the splotchy leaves and the big arching inflorescences of like, you know, up to a hundred or more flowers. And then you have the boring fowls, <laughs> which people seem to be crazy about, but I'm just the, like... The big white ones that... No, I'm talking about like Violos, Violacea or Bellina or t oh. the, the, the big shiny green leaves and then the mm -hmm. one flower and it's like... But everyone has you know, likes and dislikes. I'm sure if I had one, I would feel differently. But we, I got to judge some of Frank Smith's uh, Bellinas at, at Tam Miami. And uh, I mean, these plants are like this big. And, you know, each leaf is this monstrous. And, and I was like, oh, okay. I can see why people are into that. And then you smell it, and it smells so good. But mm, Yeah, I've heard their fragrances are great. Yeah. I, I think with my, my extreme heat and then the occasional cold snap down to freezing by accident in, in my greenhouse i suspect it wouldn't do very well probably not be much yeah. after that yeah exactly um well maybe we'll set, save the catacetums for last but i did have one more thing before the catacetums because i wanted to show you my catlia maxima oh yeah and my maxima this is the cerulea form and it's it's i think it's i think it's confused because from what i've read they're supposed to bloom around, around this time of year, but mine has the past two years bloomed in summer and then started growing. So you can see it's got new growths coming up and it's just completed some other ones about a month ago. So I'm wondering, uh, any idea if is why that would be? Um, growing under lights, you, you lose a lot of the seasonality for, for a lot of species. Some will still bloom like clockwork at the same time of year. Um, others like Maxima will bloom once or two or three times a year. Um, and it seems like yours is kind of, I bet you, I bet soon enough that plant's big enough to give you blooms in spring and then in fall and then spring and fall. That would be awesome. Yeah. And it's not for all species. Some, some like I said, will, will maintain that that seasonal, that seasonal seasonality, I guess. And then, and then others were just like, whatever, I'm under lights. Life is easy. I'm going to bloom whenever. Right. There's no problems here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's... I guess if we're going to keep showing fun plants, here's another one. I haven't gotten this one to bloom yet. This is a uh, Neomoria Wallisii. Oh, okay. Um, and I think it might be irrorata now, but you know, it's just one of those big leafy things. But if you look it up online, the, the flowers are just absolutely amazing. Um, so I'm really What's it called Neo something, uh, Neo Morea Wallisii. All right, let's see if we can pull in a picture for everybody. Got that. Oh, it from... looks kind of Vanda ish. It, yeah, it kind of has a, a, a interesting, weird Vanda kind of quality to it. You guys can see I'm sharing the image right now. You guys can look at it. Yeah, it's cool. And the color's, color's kind of bronzy looking. Yeah, it, kind of, it looks like big flowers and um, not common. And when I saw that, I think I got it from Equihanra when they were here at the San Antonio show two or three years ago, or I guess it would have been three years ago because two years ago was COVID times almost. Um, and yeah, so I assume it's an import. I think it's adjusted. It seems like it's big enough to bloom. Hopefully it goes soon. Um, and then I guess, well, I got one more oddball. Oh, what is that? Is Paris that a fire? Alada. Peristeria, okay. This is the National Orchid of Panama, I think. Oh, nice. And it's called the Holy Ghost Orchid. And I burned the crap out of it. Oh, this dang. Is just, this is just sun damage. 
This is Texas sun damage, but it it put out this bulb this year, and it's got two more growths going on the side here. So it uh it kind of shrugged off this. I mean, it looks melted, doesn't it? It, it looks like a ton, it looks like nuclear fusion took place there. <laughs> um, yeah. So those are my weird ones. I'm hoping this one blooms soon. And, and the flowers, I got to see actually one blooming at Tim Miami. And uh, they're they're white. They're, each one of them is about this big, but it's it's on a long inflorescence, and it's a Stanhopea relative. Oh, cool! And so, but it's one of the where the, the spike grows up, and then all of its sort of uh, other parasite areas have their spikes that are pendant, and they they, they grow down. So, I figure this is this one seems like my condition. So hopefully, I'll be able to make a video about that guy soon. That's cool. Dove orchid. Dove Angel. orchid. Yep. Angel. Uh, Orchid's Angel's Obsession says it's a dev orchid, very elegant. Yeah, yeah. If you zoom in on the flower, it looks like a, a dove flying away. Uh, you cool. can see the beak and the wings and stuff. Yeah. Let's see what you got. All right. It's time. Let's look at these uh, clones. Or They're not really clones, are they? They're seedlings we got from Fred Clark earlier this year, the June list that came out. Yeah. This is Cloesia Rebecca Northern. Rebecca Northern is uh, grace done by Cloesia rosea. Mm -hmm. And this little booger has got two spikes on him. Oh. I cannot it's believe really it. It's really early. Normally they go in the spring, in like February. Well, I guess it's that, those lights, right? No, he's got, yeah. he's got one on each side. See the little dude there? That's cool. He's got another little dude. Whoops. There. You're going to love the scent. I know. Mm. I was not expecting this. So, you, I like you already. <laughs> You're a keeper. What's cool about this plant and this other plant I'm going to show you is that they're, they have the same mom. So, this one here, this is uh, my Momodia Jumbo World. Oh, you have one of these now. Uh, kan Kanazawa? Yes. And then this, so this one, the mom is Grace Dunn. This one's mom is Grace Dunn. And uh, you can see they're kind of both in that same fall yellow flower mode or yeah. yellow, yellow leaf mode, dropping leaves. This leaf was totally green last week and it looks like it's about to fall off. This one's got a spike too. <laughs> so spike season has started for me finally. I don't, I don't typically get any kind of catacetum stuff in the summer or fall, but the winter's when they show their stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, there's, there's two types of cloaceas. There's uh, one that bloom, you know, around January, February, and then there's the sort of big, I call them the goblin-looking ones, the big green flowers, um, and they bloom in, in summertime. Uh, but the cloacea, uh, uh, rosea varsavixii, and a few others whose names I'm forgetting are, are those sort of small, mm. sort of the round cup-shaped flowers that you, that you sort of think of when you think cloacea. And then those other, the, the goblin ones, um, Russelliana uh, is one, and uh, Thylakyla uh, is another. And they are, um, they are, uh, they, they're the summer bloomers, and, and they're weird looking, and they make weird looking hybrids. And I've heard they don't smell very good either. I haven't I haven't smelled them in person, so I, I can't speak to that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think having yours bloom in the spring or starting to spike now is really cool. Uh, I'm a little jealous. I'm excited. I'll be sure to <laughs> show everybody when it blooms. Yeah, this is Hunter, by the way. What's up, Hunter? You say hi. 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 <laughs> Um, so this is my, uh, Coopery. Coopery. Yeah. You can see nice. it is quite a bit smaller than yours. I wonder if I got on the tail end, you know, I think he takes the best plants first, you know, <laughs> maybe, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Let, can, can you show it? Can you zoom in on the, on the leaf axles and maybe we can see if there's a spike in there somewhere. Yeah. So there's the lower one. There's the next one. Oh. 
What's that light spot? Or is that just an artifact of the camera? It's light. No, it is a light spot, but it's a depression. Oh, okay. It's not a bump. And then there's another light spot there, but again. No bump? Not a bump. It's a inward bump. I mean, do you do you really think this could be big enough to bloom, as small as it is? It, it could be. It's, it's, Hunter says no. It's, uh. <laughs> I, I agree with Hunter. It. I mean, I've, I've seen them bloom that small. It's not for sure. So like, you know, this size is, you're like, okay, that's going to bloom. Oh yeah. And that one is kind of 50, 50. I'm, I'm going to be pessimistic so I don't get disappointed. I'll try it. <laughs> okay. Go on. And did you bring your big female, cl uh, uh, Coopery? I didn't actually. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I should have, but, um, so this is one you just got this year mm -hmm. in the spring, and there it yep. is. And is that, can you tell already what, if they're going to be male, female? The, the size, of, yeah. So the, these will be, um, A, a plant this size will only uh, send out males. Okay. Um, and B, you can see it, it, it's kind of like a pine cone where all the, the flowers are stacking each other. Although when we were chatting last time, I, I thought <laughs> I jumped the gun a little early and I thought the same thing and they all turned out to be females. Yeah. You were like, uh, yeah, I'm glad. I mean, I was impressed to see how many you got. Four. Oh, I'm getting ants on me too. Uh oh. I mean, ah, just so everybody can see which, which one we're talking about. This is there was ants on you? Signicky's Coopery. Put the ant back in here, and, and the ants will go after the sugar, of course. Which I'm fine with, yeah, buddy. Um, so yeah, so I look forward to blooms. I bet I'll bloom. I bet I'll see flowers in three weeks, probably. Looking forward to seeing them. Yeah, yeah, should be nice, actually. Um, I got you know, Fred was in town. In in Texas, uh, I guess it was it was the first week of October, so I guess it's two weeks ago. And um, I got some more plants from him uh, when he was in Austin. And, oh, really? Yeah, I got a a, a Certipodium punctatum that he brought me, and then a, a Dendrobium speciosum, actually a a good size one. Okay. Those and that's huge. that's yeah, they can get big, but they they love. You know the conditions they grow in are just like Texas, right? Okay. Um, maybe not as cold in the winter, but um, they, they can handle temperatures down to freezing, and then you know the the hundred plus degree temperatures are no problem. And then actually, so I was like, "Hey, Fred, can we do a chat?" And he's like, "Yep, yep." So I'll, I'll uh, we're gonna do a trial run, um, and we're gonna chat about fertilizer oh, nice. tomorrow. Yeah, and and um, he kind of blew my mind with this fertilizer. His talk was how to be an 80th percentile grower. And, but before the, before that, him and I were chatting and, and what he mentioned to me about fertilizing just like <clears throat> blew my mind. So that's what our, our chat will be about. And um, hopefully what he told me will, will make sense to everyone else. And, and uh, it should be a good, should be a good talk. So we should, we can look forward to a conversation with you and Fred Clark tomorrow. No, so the trial one run will be. He he wants to kind of go over okay. things tomorrow, and then we'll probably film it next weekend. Oh, okay. All right, great. Yeah. Looking forward to hearing that. Yeah, and you know maybe maybe I can show him some of his plants. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. So. Well, Steve, is it about that time? Getting close to the hour. Yeah. Yeah, we can. Um... I'm looking around to see if there's anything else. I've got some stuff that's in bud, but I'll just make a video about it next week. I think, um, I can show <laughs> this little sad little guy. I actually wasn't going to show this one. I'll just talk about it real quick. It's just Lelia Allorii. Oh, that's and the little bitty one. It's so sad looking, <laughs> but I, I do want to show that, you know, um, not everything goes right in, in orchid land and at my house. And, uh, you know, sometimes things need a little TLC and this guy's putting out three new growths. So it's time for, as soon as we're done with this chat, I'm going to repot it. Uh, something different. He's sending you some, he's sending you a signal. Yeah. Yeah. The signal is I'm going to die. If you don't do something. I want to live. <laughs> Please help. Yeah. Me. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is my last chance. All right. Well, uh, everybody at home, thank you so much for joining us. Please uh, head over to Steve's channel and check out his videos. And especially next week, we're all going to be looking forward to hearing you chat with Fred, uh, Fred Clark. And I feel like the level of Orchid Geek Out will be, it'll be like 80th percentile. <laughs> You know, just, just chatting with him and realizing that I can do stuff differently that might be make my plants way happier is is great. So I, I look forward to sharing that with everyone. And I'm glad that he's he's happy to share too. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Well, uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and finish up. People at home, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time on My Green Pets. Thank you so much, Stephen. And we're going to go chat. ahead and... Uh, end our live stream now cool. see you guys next time Later. okay